Niranjit, one last question before we take, take it to the audience. Uh, if, if I was an individual doctor, since you've seen so many products, what is those few small two or three things that you will tell me that I should go and implement tomorrow in my clinic? Um, you know, just to, uh, I'll take 30 seconds to, uh, you know, cause some of the points they mentioned, uh, smarter hospital per se. I don't think, see, at home, you know, except for TV, I don't think we have remote for anything. And most of the remotes, you know, 90% of houses remote doesn't work. So, patient don't expect, you know, everything to be automated, remote control in the hospital. They don't come there for that kind of, uh, you know, experience. But the smartness is to ensure that their overall experience is really good and they don't, you know, wait everywhere. They don't know what to do next, etc. So that is the real, you know, I think understanding of a smarter hospital. And uh, regarding the, you know, IT adoption, again, I'm coming back to, you know, uh, it's not that we don't have enough people or we cannot even expect to create uh, good quality people now. Because, you know, creating one good quality, you know, employee and bringing it to the organization, it takes years. So instead of like, you know, keep saying that we don't have quality people, I think the technology should come up with the ways and means of really like, you know, taking it to the people that we are currently living with. For example, if I have to really get a HMIS, which is, you know, traditional HMIS, then I need to have good quality people to use it. But today, be it Practo, be it any of the latest applications, I don't think you need to really have a good quality people to really get trained. Anybody can start adopting it within second day, third day. I don't think I need to have a training of any, any of these apps, correct? So knowing that I have only these kind of quality people, I think the technology should come up with ways and means. Instead of expecting the employees to go get trained, you know, go and get educated and come back, 90% of our you know, quality patients, our quality staff we have, they can only just adopt these kind of small tools. So uh, definitely the imaging is one thing, and as well as the doctor and patient interaction, I could see hundreds of very, very useful tools and apps are coming up because most of the people like, you know, who are developing apps, they are really aiming the patient and the doctor communication aspect. That is definitely the number one which is happening. And I get to see every day 10 different uh, demos and I could see really most of the things are really amazing. So patient and uh, doctor communication topping up. Second thing is like, you know, uh, the thing which I normally, I, I always wanted to create a, give a message there is, uh, if you want to, you know, um, IT budget for that matter. The return on investment or value of investment is like, you know, we think, okay, there is 10 crores is that I need to invest. Immediately management thinks, okay, how do I get this money? Can I increase the, you know, appointment fee? Can I increase my consultation fee? You know, so we are trying to really get that money back from the patients because that's the only source of revenue for the hospitals. In case if the IT can start really looking at or the technology can start looking at how do I save money? How do I save my expense? And if that can really help me to bring in more technology and give a better experience to my patient, if we start taking that approach and if the technologies can really help the hospital management, COOs and CIOs and the administrators to you know, take that right decision, I think the way the technology adoption will completely be different. Don't increase the like, you know, cost to the patients, but save the kind of your expenses. And then like, you know, if I can really show a return on investment or value on investment on you know, my investment to the management, I can say, be it e-procurement, be it any kind of my you know, inventory management system or anything, and I say 5% savings, that is a huge value. So I don't increase my patient cost, but I still I can give a better service. But the unfortunate, uh, I would say definitely use the word unfortunate thing is, most of the technology providers today, you know, sorry to say that, they are coming independently trying to sell their products. No one wants to give a proper solution to our problems. That this is a you know, very, very unfortunate thing. Even big A, B, C category com companies I had seen, there are multiple like you know divisions among them. They just want to come and sell one part of theirs, and they're not even bothered about their next vertical within their own you know companies. Please come up with a solutions. Understand our problem. Come up with a solutions. You have your consortium of like you know multiple vendors, etc. Give us a solution. Today, A company gives a demo, and tomorrow B company gives something else. We get confused, and we get confused. Our management get confused, and we try. It fails. We call different hospitals. They say everything failed. Then we go back to okay. Let's continue with paper and pen. So please come up with a solution. Don't sell your products. Thank you. You know what? Half the people on the that side will be thinking that we are trying to tell them solutions, but they are not understanding that. <laughs> so yeah. So obviously, with the paucity of time that we have, you know, if if I have to personally give my opinion, yes, we are taking steps. India's taking uh, appo online appointment is definitely something that has happened. Bigger hospitals have taken a lot more initiatives. IT budgets have started happening in smaller hospitals. It's a reality. People have smarter IT people, and, and people who are focusing on administrative people are totally being, I just heard that the new JD for an administration head is based that if he knows IT only then should he join. So things are happening, but I think there's a lot to do. For us, if we enter a hospital, will it be seamless? 
today probably we not but yes steps are being taken and if we have visionary people as such i think another 5 to 7 years with the kind of products we have i think we'll be close to what international standards are so i thank you all so much for this it's been great so any any uh, any questions we'll have two or three questions yeah yes please. Uh, specifically, I would like to direct the question to you, Mr. Arvind. Uh, with so many hospitals being set up over a number of years, now that you come up, you're coming up with newer hospitals. I know there's one coming up in Navi Mumbai shortly. Uh, what kind of changes are you incorporating right at the out outset, architecturally, um, technologically, and even with collaborations with doctors and other sectors? Very relevant question. Uh, right from the time the investment committee sanctions a hospital. Earlier what used to be done is an architect will make a building, there will be a blueprint. Probably one week before the puja, the hospital, the doctors, the IT will be called and there is chaos. Right from the time the investment committee sets up, Till the time the investment committee says come back with a plan, everybody who's part of the hospital collaborates in making the design, right? In terms of why are we setting up a hospital there? What needs to be the clinical services? What is approximately the time when we are going to go to market and can we be reasonably futuristic because if we planned it three years before, by the time the hospital is done, probably one cycle of that equipment is gone. So we need to be thinking five years from then. Get the entire hospital wired up. Whether or not you're able to afford the devices wired up because once a hospital is built, breaking it and getting it technically competent is not an issue of cost, but an issue of operational reality. Simple problem. You may be able to afford an operating theater getting a high definition uh, medical grade monitor. In order to do that, you need to have an operating room free. In an existing hospital, an operating room cannot be freed up easily. Then getting, ma making sure that it's you know, uh, cleared and all the infection control done. So that's what happens. So right from the beginning, all teams are part of it. All teams do the due diligence, all teams verify it and then start setting up. That means that you are also starting to look at workflows and processes. What do I mean by that? How far is the emergency from the cath lab, door to balloon time? You can't have it ground floor and fifth floor. So you start looking at workflow efficiencies because only then when we tell the folks to construct it, it will be minimum distance. That's kind of how you start looking at it right from the time you build it. And when you are doing renovation in any of the existing hospital, how can we incorporate these principles as comfortable as possible within the constraints of an existing old building? which many hospitals will face. So that's kind of what happens when you're designing and architecting a brand new hospital. You know, while that question came was very relevant, I was just thinking, I don't know whether academic papers on project planning for such kind of things, has anybody has done that in India in which I think the information right now is in silos with hospitals and their teams and probably someone who wants to know how to do this properly, it doesn't have any academic information with them, right? Is, is that correct? You, uh, you're right, a few academic papers going around on uh, thing, but honestly, there's nothing that's a formal structure as a hospital design as part of civil engineering or uh, hospital management. Nothing that's formal, it's individual. I've, I've personally interacted with a lot of people who are doing a PhD in the subject, but it comes out of personal passion and not as a structure. Again, right from the design standpoint, starting to get everybody to do a role play such that they are able to use it when it comes. So what do I mean by that? Something as simple as if I'm setting up a doctor's office, what is going to be the ergonomical positioning of the wash basin and the computer? Because if I'm going to turn around and start typing and the patient is sitting in front of me, no matter how diligent I am, it's going to be difficult. So how do we set up that? How is their ergonomical position going to be from the keyboard to the mouse, even if it's dictation? Because I'm going to be sitting on it for eight hours or four hours and I can't have my hands like this. Uh, then the doctor will need an ortho consult. Uh, 
but so you look at that in terms of the ergonomical position the workflows even when it comes to such like setting and that's where you will see efficiency and you will see the best utilization of space which definitely is premium okay one, oh, sorry one last question over there yes thank you um, Mr. Shivaram Krishnan, I was very interested in what you had to say throughout the um, uh, panel discussion. So my question stems from what you had to say, but is probably directed at everyone on the panel right now. Um, so I'm just wondering, what is or and or what should be the government or a quasi-governmental or a regulatory body's role in in standardizing this smart hospital, because we're trying to say that a smart hospital means quality of care, smart hospital means efficiency. So we want smart hospitals all. We don't want smart, we don't want smartest, we don't want the most smart. So what is that? Now every, right now, everyone has their best system. They're, everyone's trying to get a leg up. Everyone has one system working. It works great for them, works great for someone else. So what should be the role of somebody to kind of standardize? That's when we can measure outcomes we need to do something where hospitals are comparable to each other. So, and I think just to go back to what Mr. Ramakrishnan said when he said, get a solution, like what is the ask? Is there a common ask in the first place? Like, can all hospitals get together and agree that this is what they want? Because again, the idea is everyone wants to step up and it's not a bad thing. But I think in this race to provide the best care and the best uh, outcome for their patients, is there a common ask then that will make the solution um, for a anybody so much easier. So I think it's just that, you know, like you provide this idea of workflow. Is workflow something everyone is going to agree on? Is that standardized? And like where, where do people who want to develop a solution find that? National, electronic, he also wants to answer, yeah. National electronic Health Record Standards exactly answers the question that you asked in terms of the minimum requirement that solution should have focusing on clinical processes, minimal information clinicians need to have, minimal information hospital operation should have, and what data sets and subsets they should be using. So that's exactly what is there. And yes, that has been agreed upon after several deliberations, including clearance from the Medical Council of India, in terms of what these should be. So those are the minimal standards that need to be followed. National Electronic Health Record Standards notified on the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare website. Okay, thank you so much. I think we should also thank Business World for this amazing day, for getting all these senior people. Thanks a lot everyone for sitting across. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, panelists.